In this video, I'll talk a little bit about how to use surveys in your class, some of the advantages of using surveys, some of the limitations, and examples of how to do that. So to start with, a survey is just a collection of questions that you give to students. Um, these aren't questions like in a quiz or a test that have right and wrong answers. They're questions that you use to get information from your students. For example, how much they like class, how much time they're spending on homework, what they like, what they don't like. Um, we could also ask them about their attitudes, about their beliefs, um, or really almost any question could be asked in a survey. Some of the major categories of data that we get from surveys, some of the things that we learn about our students is what they believe, what their attitudes are, what their desires are, what their perceptions are. Um, examples of learning about student desires would be we could ask our students to tell us about which uh, unit they would like us or which topic they would like us to cover in class next or maybe we have the option of doing a couple of different activities in class and we could send out a survey to allow students to choose which activity we'll do in class. Some of the advantages of using surveys, um, I think one of the, the main advantages is that you can do anonymous surveys, which allows students to give you feedback and to answer questions without you knowing their name without knowing which student gave you which piece of feedback, which obviously has some limitations and sometimes we want to know which student gives which feedback. But when students are able to do anonymous surveys, they tend to be more honest about their responses, especially if we're asking students to tell us things that they don't like or suggestions that they have for class. Sometimes they can be nervous to tell us because they'll think, they think that we'll be mad at them um, or that if they tell us something that we don't like that will punish them. So if they know that their, their feedback is anonymous, then they can feel comfortable in, in giving us really good and honest feedback. Surveys are also very quick to create and to send out and for students to take um, and allow us to get some data very quickly and, and very um, easily compared to a lot of other methods of getting data. One of the disadvantages of using a survey, especially these anonymous surveys, is that it can be difficult to ask a follow-up question. For example, if I ask my, my students to um, rate on a scale of one to five how much they enjoy my class, to say one if they hate the class, five if they love the class, or two, three, or four if it's somewhere in the middle, um, I'll be able to get an idea about how much my students enjoy the class, but I'm not going to be able to know about why my students like the class or why they don't like the class if I don't also include that question on the survey. If a student tells me that they hate the class, they, they rate it as a one out of five, um, I'm not going to be able to follow up with that individual student and find out more about why they don't like class um, if they've responded anonymously. Um, so that's one of the limitations. Some examples of when I use surveys in my class is when I want to know if my students are enjoying class, when I want to give them to the choice between different activities, when I want them to provide suggestions or advice. Um, sometimes there's sensitive subjects that students are uncomfortable talking about um, or sharing about in front of their classmates or in front of me as a teacher. Um, this could be situations like bullying or maybe about students cheating. And um, so a survey could be a good option then. Or just if I want to, my students to be able to give their opinions and to be very honest and open about that. When you're interpreting survey data, there's two main types of data that you're gonna get from surveys. One of those data types is discrete data and one I'll call unstructured data. I can show you a quick example of that. Here I've asked students to tell me how much they enjoy class and also to tell me what they like about class. So this data about um, how much they enjoy class is discrete. It means that it, there's only a limited number of options that students can choose, only one, two, three, four, or five, 
And because of those limited options, it's easy to push, put this data on a graph or a chart and to visualize it and to, to get a picture of it that way. Whereas this unstructured data, students have unlimited numbers of responses that they could choose. They're not choosing one, two, three, four, or five. They're actually writing a short description. And so there's not a good way for me to put this sort of data on a graph to be able to quickly understand it like I can with discrete data. I'm going to have to do more work interpreting this than I will with this discrete data. In another video included in this course, I go into more detail about how to actually interpret the data from these surveys. So that's an overview of what a survey is, when I would use it, the advantages. Um, so I hope that is helpful for you.